I'm Chef Jasper for Hen House Market, and today we're at Lewisburg Cider Mill in Lewisburg, Kansas. You see what I have in my hand? Oh yes, an apple cider donut. Of course, we're going to take a nice tour today, watch him make these delicious donuts, and watch him press some of the most delicious apple cider in the country. But right now, I'm with my friend, owner, of course, Josh Herbert. Josh, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jasper. Good to see you. Well, I say show because this is a production you have out here, my friend. It is. This is always a really fun time of year. We always look forward to it, and it's so exciting to have the weather be what it is now. It's getting chilly. It's just today. turned. I mean, it's perfect. Pumpkins everywhere, and the smell of cider donuts and apple cider being made. It's just it's what we work all year for. No doubt about it. Now, let's talk a little bit about the history, of course, of Lewisburg Cider Mill, your family, and of course, Tom and Shelley Sherman. Of course, yeah, so my, my wife, Alexis, and uh, she, she actually grew up out here. She was almost born on this property, and her grandfather bought this farm back in 1975, and he bought it with the dream of creating a little roadside apple cider stand. And so 44 years later now, it is what it's become through the efforts of a lot of people, but in a large part from Tom and Shelley Shearman, who ran the business for almost 40 years and developed it into what it is. I have spent many, many falls out here, but I did not realize that the barn was actually here when Emmett bought the property. Yeah, it was. There was an original homestead that was here. There was a house that was where the store is now, and it was here along with the barn. So the barn was built we think maybe in the 1880s, 18, really? late 1870s, and it's been modified over the years to accommodate what we do in it now. But that was part of Emmett's dream was to take that barn and to create a little cidery operation, which he did. So originally, that was the pressing barn, and inside that barn, they actually made donuts and sold cider by the gallon. People would come by in this roadside stand and bring a jug or get a jug and take fresh pressed cider home. I had no idea now. We're talking about the cider. That's where it really all began. Let's talk about the process of making the cider. The apples coming in. I mean, I watched the truckload just come in and wow, that was something else. It's really fun to watch and fun to see and also fun to smell. All that fresh pressed apple smell. We love it. And part of the process is obviously starts with the growers. So we have the orchards out there all over the United States, but we often buy from mostly from orchards in Missouri. And they grow a lot of apples in the Missouri River Valley. And, and so we bring a lot of fruit from there and we take the fruit and we process it. So we'll wash the apples, we'll, we'll uh, grate them or cut them up, chop them up, and then press that. And we press all the juice out of that apple mash. And then we take that apple cider every day and we bottle it fresh pressed every day. I didn't realize that now. I'm talking 1978 or so. I remember the first time I came out here. And I asked you this earlier. I remember the big mats. Yeah. And the way they would press it in these, I mean, it looked like big, big beds almost. Yeah. And they would press the apples that way. Yeah, that's an old style of pressing. And so that was a batch process. It's a rack and cloth press is what they used to use. And that's what we used for years. Probably for the first 10 or 15 years, we used a rack and cloth press. And it kept getting bigger and bigger. So we don't use a rack and cloth press anymore. We use a different kind of press. We use a continuous double belt press but it's basically the same thing you're extracting the juice out of the the crushed up apple and you're taking that juice and you're processing it putting it in a bottle stabilizing it and then selling it I know I was feeling some of the leftovers yeah and they were just almost as dry as can be my hands weren't even wet after yeah. testing that yeah it's really amazing how much of the juice that the press is able to extract from the it's gotta be 99 percent you know <laughs> It's funny. The odd thing about it is that it feels dry, but it's actually about 85% wet. Really? <laughs> There's an enormous amount of water still left over uh -huh. in that. And so we do all we can to extract all of that with all the juice and sugars that come but out of it. But you got the, the good part already. Got all the good stuff out of it. It's like pressing grapes, same right. thing. So then we take all that leftover product and the cattle and the pigs sure love to eat that. And it goes on the farm. It does. Sure does. That's fantastic. Now, you're doing something that's really unique, like, like in the vineyard, you're making just one apple, or how, how, how would I say that? Yeah, so we do have one, uh, one finished cider product that we sell that's a single varietal cider. Okay. So, you know, the, the growers of apples, they grow many different varieties of fruit. Each different variety has a different flavor and texture and different composition. Sure. And so Honeycrisp is such a 
popular apple and we love it so much that we decided to take the Honeycrisp apple, press only Honeycrisp apples, oh my and gosh. put that into the bottle. So if you like Honeycrisp apples, you should try our Honeycrisp cider because it really is 100% Honeycrisp apples pressed There's and, no and doubt. put into the bottle. So it's a, it's a, it's a really popular cider that we sell. Okay, I have to ask you about these donuts now. I've been eating them for years. I'm telling you, I'm giving my age away, but I'm telling you, for at least 40 years now. Oh my God. Yeah, it's, they never change. It's hard to eat one, I'll tell you. And <laughs> we give credit to Shelly for coming up with the apple cider donut recipe. She decided early on to try and use some of the cider that was left over. In the early days, they would press apples and they would sell it. Whoever would stop by could get the fresh pressed apple cider, but it didn't last very long. So it would start to ferment, then it was unable to be used. Sure. And so she decided that she was going to try to use some of this mildly fermented apple cider that can be sold as sweet cider. And so she started using the apple cider to make the donuts instead of using water. And it changed the flavor and the composition of the donuts and people loved them. And so all of a sudden we didn't have enough of the fermented cider, so we just started using fresh pressed sweet cider and use that in the donut mix and it's become a mainstay of our daily productions. We're open seven days a week year round and apple cider donuts are made fresh first thing in the morning every day. I was here at 8 a.m. at the door people were already lining up in the morning and this is a weekday we're doing this yeah. and they're waiting for the donuts. Yeah they're a big hit. <laughs> they there is no hit. doubt about it. Okay so now we have to ask you oh I love this while we're here, here comes a truckload of apples coming yeah, in. Yeah, so this is really fun. So this is an end dump truck. We just picked this up from either Racy or Peter's Orchard up in Missouri. That's 50,000 pounds of apples right there. Wow, no that kidding. That will press into juice over the next four hours. So that will be in the bottle by the end of the day and shipped off to Hen House and other grocers. Within four hours, you will have that press. Yeah. That is something else. What's on the horizon? I can only imagine. I mean, I look at the barn, I look at the old general store and all. Something's up here. I know you're doing a little remodeling. We're always trying to come up with ways to make a better experience for customers, you know. And we built this new deck, and the new deck is really part of one of our plans for the coming year. And I've been working in my garage for years on hard cider. Uh oh. So we're, we're an apple centric business. We make sweet cider and a lot of other things. On the side, I've been making hard cider because I've really found a love for hard cider and the interesting things that you can do with apple cider when you ferment it. Certainly the next generation, you are taking it to another level. We're just looking forward to creating new products that people will really love. Apple cider, apple donuts, all these pumpkins. I mean, this is something else. Josh, thank you so much. I ate that donut, you guys, while I was here. I'm sorry. There's a lot more donuts inside. I can't wait to do a little shopping. And all the people here coming in right now, this is something else. This is fall in Kansas City, fall in Lewisburg. And I'm telling you, I can't wait to experience some cider right now. Going in for that. Thank you so much for all your time. I know we've been everywhere on the farm here. You call the farm. So our country store is, uh, is a year-round operation. Uh -huh. We also have our Lewisburg Cider Mill family farm. And so the family farm is on the acreage and that's only open during the fall season. And that's where we have a U-Pick pumpkins, a corn maze, and lots of farm play for the kids. So that's open through from middle of September all the way through Halloween. And a little museum. Yes, the old farmhouse holds all of the old memorabilia from all the years that we've been in business. Boy, boy, it doesn't get any better. Lewisburg Cider Mill. Great to see you, Jasper. Thanks for coming Thank out. Thank you for all your time, I'm telling you. And those delicious donuts and cider. Of course. <laughs>